Street. Futures suggesting a higher open this morning as investors and traders reevaluate some of the Fed rate cut expectations with the CPI, the PPI data this week coming in a bit higher than expected. Let's bring in Scott Bauer. Let's bring in the CEO of Prosper Trading Academy this Friday morning, joining us to talk currencies and treasuries. Scott, welcome. Let's begin Thank you, with, thanks to you, the data this week, the spike in yields and how we've seen a, another shift in Fed expectations. It's unbelievable. The volatility <laughs> that we're seeing in that space is, is is really unreal. Here we are back at, you know, pushing 430 on the 10 year again. We were just here a few weeks ago, but last week we were pushing 4 percent. Yeah. Right. So so it, it really tells you the uncertainty in the marketplace and how jittery the marketplace is about what the Fed is going to do and when they're going to do it. Yeah, you know, I look at that uh, Fed Fund Watch, uh, that Fed Funds tool, and I'm reminded of how into the end of last year, I think we had priced in a 100% rate cut, right, for March. Here we are now pushing back June, July expectations, ultimately. I felt like this really uh, boosts Fed credibility and kind of pushes back on those market expectations that we saw. Remember, we were looking for six at one point. Yep. There, there's no question about it. And, and you know, there's a lot of pundits, there's a lot of people out there that say the Fed doesn't know what they're doing and Powell is this and that, and the other. Yet the market expectations have come down yeah. to the Fed expectations, not the other way around. Yeah. My fear right now is the fact that the market, the overall equity markets have held in there. We're near our all time highs with these expectations being tempered. Is it, you know, too frothy? Or is it an acceptance that, you know what, the economy is decent, the economy mm -hmm. is strong, mm -hmm. even though rates may not be coming down here, you know, we're okay with that. I, I'm not really sure which one, but I am just so surprised that we are still near all-time highs. Scott, I, I completely agree with you. I kind of wonder about that, too. Are we being sort of lulled into this false sense of complacency right now? Because I feel like we're really kind of, uh, the scales are teetering, right? We're, we've walked this fine line right now. We've got an economy that's very strong, but not strong enough necessarily to heat up the inflationary pressures to the point uh, where we're concerned about it here. It's uh, uh, quite the balance that the Fed's involved in at this it point. It is. It is. And then you get headlines, you know, Jamie Dimon coming out, say, don't yeah. don't lower rates anytime soon. Yeah, don't and then just the this morning, Goldman <laughs> don't. And then Goldman Sachs coming out this morning saying we need to lower yeah. rates. So you talk about adding uncertainty and adding volatility to the marketplace. You know, those are a couple of top headlines. OK, so all that having been said, one could argue and uh, hats off to the U.S. dollar, right, which has had a very level headed approach towards all of this hanging out in the middle of the range we established last year. I mean, uh, maybe uh, the, the, the pillar of strength here in terms of a clear minded expectation as far as Fed and some of the data. I mean, it's just kind of uh, playing that waiting game. It, it really is. And, and, you know, the short term trajectory right here for the dollar is a little bit to the downside. Okay. We saw a pop the other day when, you know, some of the hot inflation numbers came back in. It's down a little bit this morning here. It is, you know, still in the middle of that range. I think 104 is is definitely resistance now, which was support mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So it, it it is hanging out there. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next week or so with what happens out of the Bank of Japan and their, you know, rhetoric, their talk once again about coming off of, you know, their their zero or negative interest rate policy. Yeah, I wonder if it's more than talk this time, but I, I agree with you in terms of the U.S. dollar. It does feel like I potentially see some weakness here because the yen has kept a lid on the dollar with rates on the move higher. You'd expect to see the greenback respond a little bit more, uh, it, yep. you know, enthusiastically. But I feel like those expectations in terms of the BOJ and some of that comes from not just uh, uh, expectations of the BOJ, but recently we saw what was it? I was reading about how some of the uh, um, wages, it looks like uh, larger companies in Japan, uh, they're reporting stronger wages across the board here. Wage gains are contributing to some of those expectations. They are. And, you know, we've, we've seen this story before. We've seen it play out with Bank of Japan and, and you know, the feeling that maybe they were going to move mm -hmm. their policy mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. Yep. You know, it fizzled out. This time I agree with you. It seems like maybe there's a little more, tea, you know, much more uh, uh, reason for them to move off of that with some of the data they're getting. But, you know, it's going to be a big week. We've got Bank of Japan, Bank mm -hmm. of England, the mm -hmm. Fed all next week here. Uh, and, and, you know, that can really dictate 
where the dollar goes and where the equity markets go from here. I'm trying to remember, Scott, I think we have you on record of uh, saying that you think the ECB is going to be first to go in terms of a cut. You still feel that way? I do. Okay. I do. And, you know, some of the rhetoric that Christine Lagarde, you know, came out with last week, I yeah. think it was, or maybe it was earlier this week. Seems uh, to be the general you know, consensus. It, it, yeah. it does. And I do I do think they still will be the first ones. Scott, lastly, real quick, while we have you, probably not the most closely watched data of the day. We just had import export prices. Yep. We had the New York manufacturing data. I mean, imagine it gets kind of overshadowed by some of the inflation figures uh, today, as well as you mentioned some of the expectations in terms of uh, uh, or I'm sorry, looking ahead to next week as far as expectations for uh, some of the uh, central bank policy decisions. It, it does a little bit, but, you know, all of these data points still, and I didn't see what the numbers were, but I'm, I'm assuming that they were uh, perhaps on, a little bit on the hot side, just following what, you know, the, the recent data has been. But all of these data points are, are very meaningful at this point. And, and, you know, a lot of people will say, ah, you know, we're just waiting for the Fed. But this is more data for the Fed to consider to see what's going on. And then, you know, in addition to the to the Fed next week, we get Philly Fed manufacturing. So there, there's a lot building up. I, I feel like there's there's just a lot of intensity building up into the Fed meeting, even though we know the Fed's not going to move. Right. They're not going to do anything. But it certainly may change what Powell and the Fed says in their statement moving forward. Well, it looks like import-export prices continue to inch up here. So I think maybe that's what we're seeing in terms of some of the reaction, to, And also the New York manufacturing data coming in, uh, showing signs of weakening here. So still a lot of questions okay. when you're talking about the U.S. economy. I guess the one area we can kind of lean on has been that pillar of strength, which has been jobs and labor conditions here in the U.S. here. So, Scott, appreciate you joining us. Thanks for sharing part of your Friday morning and uh, you, joining us here on the Future Show to talk currencies and treasuries. That's Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy.